Hello, welcome to another video. This is a differential equation that has the second derivative, the first derivative, and the function itself, y, and everything is equal to zero. So, how do we describe this differential equation? We say that it is a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So you look at the coefficients here, here it is one, it's a constant. Here it is minus one, it's a constant. Here it is minus two, it's a constant. So when you have constants, you have to recognize it because it makes your life a lot easier when you're solving. So this is a second order linear homogeneous. Homogeneous simply means that the right hand side doesn't have a function, what you have is a zero. Okay, it's not a one, it's not any other thing but a zero because it makes us solving it also a lot easier. So, now let us solve this by making an assumption. You see, it is not easy to have a linear combination of the derivatives, whether first or second order or third order derivatives of a function, if it's just any kind of a function. The function that behaves the best in this way is when it is an exponential function. So we're going to assume that our y that we're dealing with is an exponential function. And you're going to see that we're correct. First assumption we're going to make is y is an exponential function, and then we solve it. Let's get into the video. Making the assumption that y is an exponential function, we can say that let y be equal to e to the rt. Now I'm choosing my independent variable to be t. Okay, so if this is the case, what do you think y prime will be and what will y double prime be? Hey, let's do that. So then the first derivative will be, if we differentiate this with respect to t, it's going to be r e to the r t. And the second derivative is going to be r squared e to the r t. So we can take these three parts and go plug it into the original equation and see what we're going to get. We're going to get r squared e to the r t minus r e to the r t minus 2 e to the RT, and our answer on the right is gonna be zero. Can we solve this equation? Yes. Let's see, let's factor out whatever is common. We know that this is common. E to the RT is common to all the terms. So we have E to the RT multiplied by R squared minus R minus two is equal to zero. So we can solve this. So this product is equal to zero if this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. But we know that an exponential function is never equal to zero. Remember, e to anything is either a fraction or it gets bigger, but it will never be equal to zero. And therefore, we know since e to the rt is not equal to zero for all t, it doesn't matter what t is. Okay, so if that's the case, we can say that um, only this part is going to be equal to zero. So we can say, therefore, r squared minus r minus 2 is equal to zero. So if this is what we've got, we can solve this quadratic equation by factoring. So if I factor this, it's going to be r minus 2, and then I'm going to have r plus 1 is equal to zero, which implies that r equals negative one or r equals two. r equals two. And do you think we are done? Well, essentially, remember what our assumption was. Our assumption was that y is equal to e to the rt. So it means we can say that y there are two y's. We can say y1 will be equal to e to the, so let's call this r1 and let's call this r2. So y1 will be e to the r1 t, and then we have y2 equals e to the r2 
t. But we know what r1 is, it's negative 1, so we can say y1 equals e to the negative t. And then we can say that y2 is equal to e to the 2t. Therefore, the general... Oh, let's introduce a constant because that constant might help us eliminate. Because it's not true that... Remember, we assumed it's not true that both of these will exi exist. Sometimes they don't exist, sometimes they exist. So the constant will help us determine if they exist. So we can call this um, C1 and call this one C2, okay? So that we can now say that Y1 equals C1 and Y2 equals C2 E to the 2T. So general solution will be the sum of both of them is going to be y equals y1 plus y2, which implies that y, this y that formed this whole thing, is equal to c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the 2t. And this is the general solution. If we got more information, we could actually evaluate what C1 and C2 are, but right now we're just going to stick to the general solution and in another case we might do the initial value problem. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.